The final complex of algorithms that we're going to talk about in this week is gift wrapping, also known as Jarvis March. This is a very fun algorithm to think of because uh, the name pretty much describes how the algorithm works. Um, you can try to read this, but I can just explain it pictorially over here. You essentially start with a line that is vertical line or vertical ray from the leftmost point, and then you wrap this around the points that you rotate it until it hits the next point. Then you rotate it around this new point until it hits this one, etc. So in other words, you can think of this as being a vertical or a pla piece of plastic or something um, like this. And then you just want to wrap this around this point set. Okay. Um, and the way this process is simulated has, is like this. So we have two steps, an uh, initialization step and then a while or repeat loop where we just wrap it around. In the initialization step, we find a leftmost point and then we initialize a ray going upward from this uh, leftmost point. And then we add this point to the convex cell and that's what initialization is. And then this point P serves as a pivot. So this ray rotates. So, we're, so we, told, we rotate the ray until we hit the first point. And then we add that point to the convex cell and then we replace the pivot with the new point. Okay, so now Q becomes a new pivot and the ray again is updated with that ray. And then we do this process until we go back to the leftmost point. Okay, so the only thing that is not clear here is that what is this rotation process? How can we code this? Right, so this step is a little bit mysterious. But the way you can code this is actually quite simple. If you want to find the first ray, the first point rotated by the ray, you simply need to calculate angles, right? So given, given this point P and for every other point PI, you can calculate the angle between, oops, between this PI and P. And then the point with the smallest angle, with the smallest rotation angle, is the one that is the that it's going to be hit first. Um, instead of actual com comparing or uh, computation of the angles, what you can do is compare angles. And comparing two angles is actually quite fun because if you have PI and PJ, the way you can decide which angle is smaller is through sideness tests or orientation tests, right? So now this, this is a left turn so therefore that angle is smaller okay so this part can be done with a for loop so inside this step we have essentially a for loop that uses orientation tests okay. so that means um and that's basically the entire algorithm how can we analyze this well um since i as i mentioned this is a for loop this takes linear time to run how many times we do this operation? One way to analyze it is to say that we do this as many times as um, there are vertices or edges in the convex cell. So if the convex cell has H edges, then it follows that this for uh, this one uh, repeat uh, repeats n time H times. So in total, it's going to be run time n times H. So in the worst case, h could be n, so this could be n squared, which means this could be a super slow algorithm. But this actually shows you something very, very interesting about two-dimensional convex cell. A two-dimensional convex cell can potentially be solved in linear time. If h is a constant, then this is a linear time algorithm, which is surprising because it shows that you cannot, in general, reduce this to sorting algorithm. This could be um faster than sorting we're going to look at this in detail or this phenomenon in detail next week just have this in mind so so far we have seen two categories of algorithms and log n algorithms and n times h algorithms and next week we're going to look at another exciting complex algorithm.